It's time to go over the basics of Unity VR development in 2023. Unity has just released their long-term support 2022 engine, and also the XR Interaction Toolkit is now at version 2.3.2. When I originally did this series, I was sitting at like 2.0. So I think it's time to go back to the basics and cover all the things they've updated, changed, and what's new. So let's get started. To download the editor, first you need to have the Unity Hub, which you can get on this website here, and I'll link it down below. But once you have that installed and set up, you will be greeted with the Unity Hub. And in the Unity Hub, we can download and install different versions of Unity. And so if we come over here, you, you can find all the versions of Unity that you have installed here. You can see I have 2022 and 20. 21 right here and both of them are long-term support and long-term support just means unity is going to support it for well a long term so it is going to be the most stable or a most stable version of unity and pretty much if you're doing development this is what you want to use so to install the newest 2022 version you go to install editor and then you choose 2022 this might change over time but that's just going to be updated version of long-term supported 2022 and then you click install and you're going to want to make sure that you have the Android build support selected with OpenJDK and Android SDK and NDK tools. The reason for that is because Oculus or Meta, their headset uses Android. So if you want to deploy to them, you're going to want to have that installed. If you're not going to deploy to them, eh, you can probably skip this, but you probably should deploy to them since, you know, the Quest 2 is currently still dominating the VR headset market. Once you hit install, it'll ask you da 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 terms and conditions. Yes, yes, yes. Make sure you read it and then the install will happen. Once installation is complete, we can move on to making a project and starting to get that set up. So I'm going to go over to projects, hit new project, and it'll take a minute. Now, if you have multiple versions installed, you're going to want to make sure you come up here and switch to the version you want to use, which of course is going to be 2022. And for this, I'm actually going to start off our project using the universal render pipeline. And the reason for that is it is going to allow us to optimize things in the future. I actually made a video about it and I can go into more depth in that video if you want to check that out. But if you're just getting started, just stick with me. All right, we can go over the universal render pipeline later. But yes, if you do not see this here, you might have to download it. You'll see these ones aren't downloaded yet. And so you just have to locate this, hit download template, but come over here. I'm just going to call this VR Basics 2023. And hit create project. So our project has booted up and built. And now the next question or where do we start is really what the question should be. And starting off, I think I'm going to create a new scene here. So I'm going to come to the scenes folder and let's find new scene. There we go. And I am just going to call this well, VR Basics. And I'm going to double click and open that up. And with this, this is where we're going to build our VR Basics environment. Now, one thing we have to consider when we're doing VR development is there's a lot of different headsets that we need to, well, consider developing for. You know, we have the Oculus, we have the Valve Index, we have the HTC Vive, and all of these have different mappings and will require different plugins. And so we're going to need something to manage all those plugins. And well, what that is, is the XR plugin manager. So if we go to editor and go to project settings and open this up, you'll find the XR plugin management. Click install and we are well on our way to managing all those plugins. Now, once we have done that, you'll see we have a few different tabs up here. So this is the PC setting and then this is for the Android setting. And you'll see we have OpenXR, we have Oculus and Sure, we could do Oculus if we're just doing Oculus, but if we want to deploy to the most number of platforms like the Valve Index and such, we'll use OpenXR. And OpenXR is just a open source standard that the Kronos Group has made. And it just allows us to have a streamlined process for all these different VR headsets to use just like a singular, similar API call. So we don't have to create code for every single headset. So yeah, that's all that is. And that's why we're gonna choose it here. So if we come over here, Click Open XR. Now, once it is done installing all that, it's going to ask to restart. Yeah, just restart. Once the restart has finished, you'll see we have a little error thing here. But before I click on that, I am going to come over to the Android side and also choose Open XR. And once I have those two picked, we could click this and you could just do fix all, but 
that's not really going to explain anything to you. If we come over here, what it's complaining about is the fact that we don't have any interaction profiles. So as I was saying, OpenXR is used to standardize between a bunch of different headsets and mappings. So if we click this plus sign here, you'll see we have a bunch of ones to pick through. So if you want to deploy to the Valve Index, we choose that profile, Oculus and HTC Vive, and you know any others that you might want to. And then you'll have to do the same for Android as well. And since, well, the Meta or Oculus is the only one, I'm just going to choose that. Yes, there's others. There's Pico, but I don't think Pico is out yet for this. Our plugins now managed. We can exit out of this. And next on the list is setting up the XR Interaction Toolkit. And what the XR Interaction Toolkit is, is a framework that will provide us a bunch of VR functionality for us to develop with. And there are other frameworks out there that you might want to consider, but I like the XR Interaction Toolkit just simply because it's the one I have the most experience with. If there's any ones that you guys have tried out that you think I should check out, please let me know in the... But right, let's get to installing the XR Interaction Toolkit. So if we come up here to Windows Package Manager, and if we go to the Unity Registry, we should be able to look it up over here. And you can see here, I can install it. And oh yeah, I'm just going to install it. Now, one thing I'll mention is if you do not see the XR Interaction Toolkit using Unity Registry and looking for it, you can find it or you can download it directly using Add Package from Git URL. And what you need to do is just click that and then just put in com.unity.xr.interaction.toolkit. And once you hit that, it will automatically download it. After it's done installing, it might say it, it, this little scary message here. If you're updating your project, then you might want to consider making a backup for your project. But since we're starting brand new, I'm just going to say I made a backup. Go ahead. Now, another thing I'm going to add from this is go over to samples. I am going to get these starter assets here and I'm going to click import. And the reason I'm going to do that is, well, it gives us a bunch of things that will make this a ton easier. With that finished, now we have the XR Interaction Toolkit. We have our plugins managed. It's time we set up our testing environment to see if all of this is going to work. So I'm going to come back to the project. I'm going to right click and I am going to add a plane. There we go. And you know, I don't like just using basic materials here. I like doctoring things up a bit. So I'm going to create a new material. This is just optional. You don't have to do this. Created a new folder. I'm going to create a new material. And I'm going to give it a new color. Let's try that. There we go. And so, yeah, now we have a new plane. But you know what? This plane's a little off. I need to zero it out. And now we're zeroed out. Next, we need to add something that will handle our VR controllers and also our camera. And it will handle us being a player within this environment. And what that is, is the XR origin. So if we go and right click XR and then origin, you'll see we get this little device here. I'm going to zero these out again. And if we can expand it out, we have all these different things now. And this is going to be where the main camera is now. You have this camera offset, which for some reason it boops it up. I don't know why it does that. I'm going to set this to zero. And then we have our left controller and our right controller. You'll also see that it added something called the XR Interaction Manager. And this is actually going to handle all our interactions between objects and ourselves. But we're not covering that in this video. That's going to be for a different video. Just wanted to point out that it automatically adds this. And it automatically adds a few other things that I want us to get rid of for now. So I'm going to select both of these. And if we scroll down here, it has a bunch of things for a line renderer and a line interactor. And I'm going to be covering that again in the future videos. But for now, I'm just going to remove these components. There we are. But I do want to keep the XR controller. We need to keep that. Otherwise, it won't track anything. This is what tracks everything. Hey, and speaking of tracking things, you'll actually notice here that none of these are set up. Nothing has filled these out. And so, well, they're not going to track anything if they're not filled out. So we need to fill them out. And how we're going to do that is we actually need an input action map. And luckily, we already have that. And that is because we have the XR Interaction Toolkit. And then we also downloaded those starter assets. And essentially, what we're doing here is we're just mapping out different buttons to different controls using action maps. And I'm going to cover that in a future video. That's a little much. But for now, what we need to do is just make sure we connect these to these. And one way of doing it is we can come up here and click this little icon and hit left controller. And you'll see that fills it all out. 
And then we could do the same for the right controller. But what if we want to do this automatically? Well, there's a way to do that too. So what you have to do is you come down here. So this is inside assets, samples, XR interaction toolkit, boop, 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 starter assets. And then I'm gonna choose the left one. I'm gonna click add to default. And then I'm gonna do the same for the right one, add to default. And you'd think that would do it, but it doesn't. See, we have to come over to editor, project settings, and then preset manager. And all we have to do is type in right for the right one and left for the left one. And the cool thing about this is now if we created a new XR origin, you'll see here that if I expand it out and go to the controllers, that they are mapped out the way they should. So that's just an automatic way to do it. So if you're doing multiple scenes and putting in the XR origin, you want to make sure that you don't forget the step to add this. That's how you do it. Now our controllers are all mapped out and we should be ready to start, right? Wrong. No, we need more managers. This is like a big company and there's managers and managers and there's middle management. But you know what? That's how you keep things organized. And what I'm going to do is actually add a empty object and just call it XR managers to keep up with the organization. I'm going to slap the interaction manager underneath that. And then I'm also going to create a empty child and we need an input action manager. And as you could imagine, this is going to be the manager of all of our action inputs. And all you have to do is add component, input action manager. And finally, we need to expand this out and we need to give it an action map to use or base it off of. And again, you find that in the samples and we just drag this here and we are finally set there. One last thing I like to do before I boot up the scene is just to have some visualization with our hands. And the way I do that is just adding a sphere onto each hand and making sure it's zeroed out. So I'm gonna go to sphere. I'm gonna, let's see, put it all at 0.1 and then make sure it's zeroed out. And then I'm just gonna copy this, paste it onto here. There we go. And so now we should be able to boot up the scene. And as you can see, my hands are tracking, things are working, and we are well on our way to building and developing things in VR. If you found this useful at all, please consider liking and subscribing. It's good to meet you if you're new, and if you're not, it's good to have you back. Always a shout out to my Patreon subscribers. Without you, I cannot make this a sustainable part of my life, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye!